America's finest city is America's funnest city. We're gonna go inside to the resident brewing company with the iconic Jimmy Langley to talk about the social scene, new things happening with craft beer, and all the cool things happening in our downtown. Let's go talk to Jimmy, see what's up. All right, here we are with the iconic Jimmy Langley. He is a commercial real estate entrepreneur. He's got his hands all over stuff happening downtown. And here we are at Resident Brewing Company. And not to mention, cheers, thanks for the beer. Welcome, thank not you. Not to mention, the first ever guest on Lifestyles, our show here. So today you are a repeat offender. Oh, that's great. I mean, it was, I'm glad to be back, and that was a lot of fun the first time. The feedback that I got from being on the show was amazing. So it was pretty cool. Thank you for Tell having me on. Tell us about the beer we're drinking. Let's start with the fun stuff. Yeah, so this uh, here is our Vacation Coconut IPA. Uh, we toast 50 pounds of coconut and uh, mix it into the brew kettle. Um, I really love this beer. It's a, a nice contrast to an, a West Coast style IPA. And the oils and the coconut really, really contrast and cut the bitterness in an IPA. So for a lot of people who may not like an IPA, often will love this beer yep. because it doesn't have that bitterness that leaves you the dry taste in the middle of your tongue. The first time we had you on, uh, you, you, you articulated in such a great way how people will get into wine, right, winos. Uh, and now you're seeing that people will sit down and enjoy a craft beer. What's what's happening new in this space since the last time we uh, chatted with you? Well, craft beer, I think, is, is evolving, right? So you see a lot of session IPAs coming out. It's a lighter uh, style IPA that still gives you a great flavor um, to a normal West Coast IPA. Um, you're seeing the sour epidemic is exploding right now. If you the see sour that. epidemic? Yes. And there's a lot of um, artisan uh, craft work, and that's what consumers want now. They want something that someone's put a lot of effort into, a lot of blood sweat sweat and tears that have a story behind it yeah. and they don't want to just drink something that's mass produced and it doesn't have a story behind it. Has it has its wanna, time and place, right? Yeah, I want to drink something that has a story that I feel like I'm connected to the product that I'm consuming and and that's where our world's heading in all, all kinds of different things. What about the story of downtown San Diego? Yeah. I mean, what, what, what's new here? You're a commercial guy, you've had your hands on all kinds of success stories from restaurants to bars. What do we have to uh, expect in America's finest city? There's a lot changing here, right? And, and obviously with the Measure C not passing yesterday, what, what, how that shakes out will be interesting to see. What does that mean? So right now, essentially we were voting to build a box to build a stadium in, right? Yeah. So, so we were asking, hey, give us a box that has, that we can create something inside. Now that that box is gone, we're back to the drawing board. And mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that the stadium will not go downtown. It doesn't mean that the Chargers are leaving San Diego, but it doesn't help at all, right? right? So- That's tough, two thirds is tough. Two thirds is tough. And that's, that's you know, it doesn't mean it's dead though. It just means that that avenue is no longer the avenue to get it done. So now you have to look at alternative financing and how that whole thing shakes out. Um, is We'll just have to wait and see who steps up to the plate, who doesn't. But you have Seaport Village. That's an RFP that the city put out um, that they finally have chosen a group to develop that whole thing. That's gonna become a community lifestyle portion of San Diego. When you look at our Bayfront in downtown, it is gonna get a huge overhaul. In the next five years, that's gonna change so much, which is really the focal point of our city. So what is like a $1.6 billion infusion into that yes. part of town? Now, it's important to, to reference again that you are a commercial real estate guy as well. Yeah. So when you see these types of things happening, what does it actually do for the city? I mean, do, do you see us bringing jobs in? Does it, uh, you know, does it help the population? grow? Um, what do you expect to see when these things start happening? So when I look at the residential units that are getting built downtown, that to me um, is a sign that office space, job opportunities for downtown are increasing. I track office space nearly 10 million square feet downtown. I'm watching buildings just in the 6 million square feet within a three block radius from here, four block radius. The, space, the vacancy rate is the lowest it's been in 15 really? years. Okay. And some of the buildings that have been vacant forever are now fully leased. I'm seeing buildings fully leased for the first time in 10 years. I've been doing this for 12 years and it's crazy to see those types of numbers. And so when you look at cool companies that are coming down, companies like Nuvasive are looking at moving their headquarters to downtown San Diego because they need the best talent. They need young, fresh, energetic talent to be downtown, to retain them and retain their employment. 
Um, and so you're seeing things like that happening downtown, which is really exciting because with that comes apartments and jobs. And, and yep. I, my world is focused on job growth. I mean, if, if, if unemployment rate is increasing, I'm nervous about the market. That's gonna, it could change. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and I'm on the tenant side of things, so I might get excited about that because rates might go down for a lot of my clients. Okay. But it also mean that business could be a little more challenging for my clients. So it's, we just have to pay attention to it and watch it as it goes. And when you look at that kind of money getting influx into, into San Diego, you look at what's happening in East Village, Maker's Quarter, Idea District, it's all happening. Whether the stadium goes down there or not, East Village is blowing up. You know, in five years from now, 10 years from now, what do you think San Diego looks like? San Diego, I think, will start to look a little more like San Francisco. And I, and I mean that in the, not in the sense of density, but I mean that in the sense of, um, of spread or sprawl. It used to be, you come downtown, you're going to Gaslight Quarter. Right. You're gonna go there, you're gonna hang out there, and that's where you're gonna be. And that's, everyone's going to that one spot. In San Francisco, you don't just go to one spot. All you, over the place. You yeah. can go to the Mission, you can go to Pacifica, you can go to Embarcadero, you can, you can mix it up and go to seven different spots that are amazing for their own value, right? Downtown is becoming that. Little Italy, uh, awesome, oh, great time. Going nuts. Downtown gas lamps amazing. East Village is amazing. This area is improving every single day. So I see us getting better to where, because we have better residential support, uh, better labor support, more jobs in this area, you'll start to see a spread of opportunity and not only business opportunity, but enjoyment, you know, yeah. lifestyle, uh, restaurants, uh, breweries. So well, when you mention lifestyle, there's nothing better than two guys having a beer and just talking beer in downtown San Diego, America's finest city. Jimmy Langley, I hope you can come down, check out the resident brewing company, certainly the local here downtown, one of the greatest spots. Cheers, thanks for having Thank us. Thank you down. for having me. Back to the show. Jimmy Langley, I gotta tell you, that guy, he's one of the most successful guys in San Diego because he's one of the most likable guys, proving that this is really a relationship-driven town. Resident Brewing Company, a great success story of our town. Hope you enjoyed that piece. Let's take it back to the show. I'm Jim Morris for Lifestyle San Diego. We're going to be speaking with the general manager of the Bale Room and Lisa Herndon. She is a top producing real estate agent with Windermere Homes and Estates. We're inside the Barrel Room and I'm joined by the general manager, Brett, and top producing real estate agent, Lisa Herndon. Thank you for having us. Thank, Thank you. you. So let's talk a little bit about the history of this restaurant. I know that it was the, the first in the organization in Rancho Bernardo. Yeah, so the Barrel Room was opened in 2007. So we're coming up on our 10 year anniversary. Uh, which is a huge milestone for us. Um, and really when we opened back in 2007, we were one of the first you know, uh, restaurants to feature like a really high quality menu with a big wine selection. And since then, we have four locations all in North County. Uh, Urge Gastro Pub right next door to us was opened in 2010. And we have Brothers Provisions, which is right up the street here in Ranch Bernardo, which was opened in 2012. And now uh, another Urge location in Oceanside, which just opened up this past January. So uh, all of our restaurants have different concepts, which make you know, it, them all very successful in this area because um, you know, they're all very different uh, with different unique menus and, and uh, selections and beverages. And that really speaks to the growth of the community, doesn't it, Lisa? It does, it does. Rancho Bernardo has been um, home to many since the 1960s, as a matter of fact. And this particular location in this shopping center where the Barrel Room is located in Urge Next Door is really the staple shopping center and staple area of the Rancho Bernardo community. I know that we were talking earlier, the only thing that was here in Rancho Bernardo was the winery. There was the winery, yes, the Bernardo Winery, which started in 1889, as a matter of fact, and was there kind of on its own producing wine and with just a very limited amount of people there for many many years until the early 1960s when the community really began developing and it just hasn't stopped since it hasn't it. stopped since I know that you are celebrating the 10-year anniversary here at the mail room tell us a little bit about that yeah so our 10-year anniversary is on January 12th of 2017 uh, that day we're actually closing down the restaurant for normal business and we're gonna uh, we're gonna have a, a celebration and gala we're actually inviting 10 of our most popular wine They'll uh, actually be represented by their winemakers or their regional representatives to uh, set up booths around the restaurant. Each booth will feature one of their most famous wines, uh, be paired with a food, uh, a food pairing from our chef, uh, Trevor Chapel. And uh, we're also going to be supporting a North County uh, uh, charity group 
Interfaith Community Services, which is headquartered right here in Escondido. Uh, has a 24-7 soup kitchen that runs, feeds homeless, uh, has a really big homeless shelter, and uh, really supports the, the community of North County San Diego. And That's so, uh, so important. Yeah, and so we're, we're really looking forward to being able to support our local community and, and have just a really fun time. And I know that this is the only retail wine bar and full service restaurant in North County. Yeah, so one of, uh, one of the really cool things that we do is we uh, allow guests to come in and, and buy wine to take home. Um, we keep our wine prices competitive with local supermarkets and, and places like Vons and Bevmo so that people can come in and find really unique offerings for family dinners or, or date night uh, and uh, can come in and, and really find affordable, amazing world-class wines at, at a cheap price. Now Lisa, I know that we can always come to the barrel room. We can always depend on a great glass of wine and some, great, and some great food, but I know that there are so many other things to do in the community as well. There are. There are several golf courses, um, Oaks North, um, the Country Club of Rancho Bernardo, Bernardo Heights Country Club, um, and a couple of courses of uh, award-winning courses also, like at the Rancho Bernardo Inn, for instance. And speaking of the Rancho Bernardo Inn, that is just a really other iconic place, aside from the winery. The Rancho Bernardo Inn went in right around the 1960s as well, along with all of the housing. And um, it really is a place for people to gather, have great events. They have a world-class spa, world-class golf course there, um, another amazing restaurant. And it really is a great community. Lots to do around here. Would you say that this is really a family driven community? It is. There, it's family driven but then there's also two different 55 and over communities for active seniors um, that have different activities and, and things for those that would prefer you know to have more of a an adult environment if you will. Um, but there really is a good mix of all of it. As a matter of fact the median age in Rancho Bernardo is 38. So even though we have two larger communities that are 55 and over we also have a very large population of young families. We are right here in the Poway Unified School District also which attracts a lot of, um, you know, people looking to ensure that their children are going to um, exceptional schools, of course, and getting a great education. And the easy freeway access, the accessibility to other parts of San Diego really makes Rancho Bernardo such an attractive draw for people wanting to get maybe a little bit more bang for their buck. Sure, it does. And I think, you know, Rancho Bernardo is just very, very centrally located. Uh, the part we're in now is just on the east side of the 15 freeway right off of Rancho Bernardo Road. Easy to remember. And, <laughs> and um, you know, we're centrally located to everything. You're 25 minutes from downtown. You're 25 minutes from the coast. You're 40 minutes up the street to... Um, Temecula. And you really know because your office is right here in the center. I can walk here. So. <laughs> As you do sometimes. And you do often. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about the slogan for this restaurant, the new world attitude with old world style. What does that mean? You know, we want to be approachable and, and uh, we want to have really good conversation about the wines that we serve and, uh, and serve it at a really, really reasonable price. You want accessibility. Exactly, yeah. We're, we're not here to make wine difficult. With, wine should be enjoyed with friends and family. And, and we you know, know that more than anybody. And you know, we, we offer that to our team members and to all of our guests that come to the doors. Now, I heard rumor that there might be another restaurant built that might be a bowling alley as well? Yeah, so uh, our Urge Projects, uh, it's called Urge Gastro Pub. So not only do we have this Urge right next door, but we have one in Oceanside. Uh, we are currently building another Urge called Urge Common House in San Marcos. It will be right across the street from uh, CSU San Marcos. And uh, not only will it be a, an amazing brewery, bar, and restaurant, but there will also be a bowling alley, bocce ball courts, and just a lot of really cool, awesome ideas integrated into the, into the restaurant. What a great location right across from my college. You can't beat that, right? Yeah, can't beat that. <laughs> Perfect. Let's talk a little bit about real estate in the area, Lisa. For those watching that might not be so familiar with Rancho Bernardo, tell me a little bit about sure. the medium housing prices. and Sure. The median housing price in Rancho Bernardo is around 520000 or so, and that was in October. Um, but I will share, they go down to, you know, the mid-200,000s for some of the smaller condos and then we have a community called the trails that's up into the one and a half million dollar range or so so there really is something for everybody out there I know that you came out originally you're from Mississippi I am you came out here for college San Diego State uh -huh. you, you haven't left I haven't left tell me what your favorite thing is about this area oh my gosh well honestly it has to be the beach 
Yes. The beach, that's my happy place. <laughs> and and we're, we're not far from the beach. No, absolutely not. And as a matter, you don't have to get on a freeway to get to the beach from here. You can cut right through Fairbanks Ranch area, and it's a beautiful drive, and you it spits you right out there by um, the Del Mar Racetrack and Del Mar Beach. And, great proximity to Torrey Pines as well. It's wonderful. Just right there. Love being Well, here. you heard it here first. You, you come out here, go to Rancho Bernardo, come to the Bale Room, and then go right to Head the to beach. beach. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you both so much for having us. Thanks, Jen. Great wine, great food, and even better company. Our thanks to Lisa Herndon today for taking us out into the Rancho Bernardo community. I'm Jen Morris for Lifestyle San Diego. Hi, I'm Lindsay Tour, and today on Lifestyles, we're going to be hearing from top real estate agent Ryan Dalzell from Pacific Sotheby's. He's going to share with us the ins and outs of this beautiful beach community of Encinitas. I'm excited to hear about it. I hope you are too. So let's go talk to him now. All right, I'm here with Ryan Dalzell. Ryan, thanks so much for having me here. No problem. It's I have great. I have to say, it's absolutely incredible to be sitting here talking to you today with this incredible view of the Pacific Ocean at one of the most popular restaurants in North County, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I mean, this is why we live here. This is December in San Diego. Yeah. Can you imagine being in Buffalo or Kansas City <laughs> or somewhere like this? But no, we're at Pacific Coast Grill, and this is one of my favorite restaurants, and the locals call it PCG, mm -hmm. so you gotta be cool. <laughs> but uh, no, it's just such an amazing spot. Now we're here in what's called the Reef Room, mm -hmm. which you said you've been here for private parties. Is this where you go? Yeah, so this is, you can have 12 people here, rent this out for the night. Um, I know there's a lot of great companies, local companies that'll come and have a holiday party and get the whole upstairs and, and the balcony, but the reef room is just so cool. Now, we just celebrated Thanksgiving recently mm -hmm. and uh, there was a turkey trot mm -hmm. that, what, ended its cycle over here? Yeah, yeah, so it started under the historic Encinitas sign, came down the coast, turns around here in the parking lot, goes back up. It demonstrates both the heart and the humor of what Encinitas is, so they, the heart part of it is they, they the San Diego Food Bank, money goes towards that, them and, and their efforts, and they get meals out to active military families. Uh, the humor part of it is there's a costume contest, and you'll you see some pretty interesting uh, outfits left over from Halloween. Let's talk about the fitness side of Encinitas because there's a lot of people that want a healthy lifestyle that live here. And of course there's gyms to visit, but would you say the best gym is what? At the 101 is probably the best <laughs> gym. I, you know, my wife and I have done a few marathons and we did all of our training up and down uh, 101 because if you're gonna be suffering through a training, why not have a view like this. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about that, uh, the community in Encinitas and why you think people are so drawn to live in this area. You know, I think it absolutely is the climate, it's the, the vibe of, of the community, it's a casual laid back uh, spot. Uh, Moonlight Beach is, is an iconic beach, it's one of our favorite spots and uh, we'll get the kids, we'll come down on a Sunday afternoon, we'll get ice cream at Handles and then walk down to the beach and play football on the beach. Now you've, you've kind of based your real estate career here in North County Coastal, but you do a lot within Encinitas. What kind of draws you to want to sell real estate there or help buyers get into this, this market? I think it's a great market because you've got entry level, and so again, for young families moving in, there's there's opportunities there. And then you go, obviously, to the, the real coastal ocean front, and you've got multi-million dollar properties. So you, it runs the full gamut. All right, so we're wrapping up 2016 and moving into a new year. Uh, you being here in Encinitas and helping people get into homes, uh, what's one piece of advice you would give at this time of year for potential sellers or buyers? Well, we get a lot of people asking, so do I wait and put my home on the market? Is now a good time to buy? So I, as we know, with the holidays, people are spending time with family and everything. But what I've found is for buyers, this is a really great time to be looking because generally people that have their homes on, on the market during the holidays, they're usually pretty motivated because why else would they want to be bothered with people coming in and out over the holidays? So it's a great time. There's not as many buyers looking right now. Obviously with the new year, you get a, a fresh group of new listings, but you also get more competition. Now you have a beautiful listing in Encinitas on the market. Talk a little bit more about that. 
It is such a great property. These The clients of ours, they took it down to the studs and what they came up with was just such a cool, beachy, uh, coastal craftsman is what uh, we're calling it. And it just really captures the vibe of Encinitas. And it is high quality. They, they did not skimp on anything. So, and it really translates the feel of the property is great. It sounds like the perfect property and the perfect opportunity. And I know you have a video to showcase it. So let's go take a closer look. All right. Wow, that looks amazing. Congratulations on that. Thank you. If somebody was interested in finding out more about this property, how can they get a hold of you? Easiest way is just go to our website, delzelgroup.com, and it'll have all the photos and all the details there, and we'd be happy to show it. Absolutely. Well, thanks again for having us here at PCG. No problem. Coronado Island is a small beach community with an island feel. Surrounded by the San Diego Bay and the Pacific Ocean, Coronado offers a unique lifestyle for its residents and the visitors that choose it as their destination. Historic homes, charming restaurants, world-class beaches, the famous Hotel Del Coronado, and a community rich in history are what make Coronado a city unlike any other. We're going to be speaking with Scott Ulrich. He is a top producer with Pacific Sotheby's International Realty, and Dave Spadafor. He is the owner of Blue Bridge Hospitality. We are at the Village Pizzeria on Coronado Island and I'm joined by Scott Arick, top producing real estate agent with Pacific Sotheby's International Realty, and Dave Spadafore, the owner of Blue Bridge Hospitality. Thanks for having us. Thank you. We are at one of your many, many, many restaurants on the island now, but it was not always that way, I heard, Dave. You started out with one, one lone ice cream shop. One little ice cream store in 1998, Moo Time Creamery, yeah. So tell us a little bit about the expansion now. Uh, just, you know, slowly over the years, since 98, uh, living here, uh, trying to find things that this community needs and that would work in the, uh, with the demographic of who we have living here and who we have visiting here. So we've grown from ice cream all the way up to a high-end steakhouse um, and everything in between, pizza, barbecue, coffee, uh, farm-to-table restaurant. Uh, it's fun. And you've been here your whole life. Yes. And you have been here for 30 years now. Uh, yeah, just part of my life, half my life. Half right? of yeah, your half life, life yeah. originally from Texas. Yeah, I moved here from Houston back in uh, 1987. You said to me before we started rolling that you think that if you had moved anywhere else in San Diego, you may not have stayed. Yeah, for sure. Why, why did you come to Coronado and never look back? Well, I came to Coronado. A friend of mine's uh, mother had gone to high school here back in Houston, and he said, well, if I was going out to San Diego to look at this job, I ought to go stay at, at the Hotel Dell and stay in Coronado. So we did that and that's what got us to Coronado. And I know you did a lot of high-end and you still do you definitely are a luxury realtor but you you represent all properties on the island. Yeah 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 I mean it's a it's a I, I'm kind of focused on the island and Coronado is, is all the from the bottom of the range which is still pretty expensive it's a million dollars or more to buy a single-family house here and they go up to you know 10 or 15 million dollars for some of the homes we sold at the you know the higher levels so I try to help people at all different levels and you know whatever price point they can afford I even try to help people get in to get rented. I don't think it's a bad idea to rent a house here. I mean, I'd rather rent a house here and live here than if I couldn't afford to than any place else. So it's and be a, on a permanent a, vacation, right? And a staycation, yeah. Staycation. I live on staycation, exactly. Now, Dave, you have seven restaurants on the island? 
Wait, yeah. let's count. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, we have, we have a few. So we have a couple of ice cream stores, one in the Hotel Dell, one on Orange Avenue. That was the original store in 98. Um, we have barbecue, Little Piggy's Barbecue, which is a southern barbecue uh, down here by the bay. Uh, we have two pizzerias, one the one we're at here, which we call Bayside, which is at the Coronado Ferry Landing, and then one across the street from the Hotel Dell. Um, Leroy's Kitchen and Lounge is a farm to table, kind of worldly food, just ever changing menu. Uh, great it's bar great scene. Burger. has a fantastic burger. And then we have Steak Chop House and Bar, which is a um, contemporary uh, steakhouse. Uh, so you, you, you walk into Steak and you, you don't feel like you're in Coronado. It's a little escape. You know, it's a big city. You seem really dedicated to improving the quality of dining here on the island. I mean, you, you're so successful now, you could branch out into all of San Diego. You've really kept it within this community. Yeah, well, you know, um, things have evolved here in Coronado. Our, our demographic is changing every day. Um, the visitor, the demographic of the visitor is changing, the demographic of the residents are changing. And, and I live here, I, uh, I'm raising my kids here and uh, just see a need for uh, greater cuisine than, uh, than what we had before. And uh, what we had before I think was a little bit more geared towards the seasonality of tourism and whatnot. And what I'm trying to do is make Coronado a destination for people in San Diego to come over. And the people that live in Coronado, they don't have to leave. Tell us a little bit about the real estate market here now. You know, it's, it's a great market. We, we had our uh, devaluation over the previous five years up until about uh, 2011. It went down from 2006 to 2011. Everything backed up in Southern California. We didn't back up very much. You know, we only have 3,000 homes and 1,000 condos condominiums in the village and another 1500 condos down in the K's and maybe another 1200 homes and condos in the in the in the K's and in the shores there's about 1500 condominiums so it's not very big in terms of places to live here so it kind of keeps the supply side fixed and there's not going to be any more product being built so there's always going to be the demand so there's always a huge demand I mean when people come here to visit they they almost everybody tries to figure out ways to think that to live here but it is it is expensive and it's a special you know special price tag but it's you know the average price I think now is about a million a little under a million eight for a house here in Coronado or home or condo in Coronado that includes condominiums as well I know that you do have a, an example of a listing here just a block or two away yeah. from the village pizzeria tell us a little bit about that property oh it's cool it's 400 first street it's just down the street here. We're on First Street over the bay. There's a peak of the bay through a couple houses looking downtown the skyline. It's got some real nice views and it's oh, close enough to walk down here to the ferry landing and enjoy some of Jay's restaurants and food and stuff like that. And also there's some the shops. There's a, a shopping, you know, right across the street as well. So it's close to the shopping and the restaurants and it's a quiet part of the island. It's uh, about a 2,400 square foot home. There's four bedrooms. It's offered for 2650000 And um, it's, a, it's a neat little spot. Well, well, you two have made this this island life seem very, very desirable. Thank you so much for having us here. Thank you. Great, it is desirable. It is a very <laughs> desirable island life. We'll come back, we're okay? Lucky. Yeah, you we're lucky, lucky. lucky to be able to live here on live on staycation. And live on staycation. That's right. Our thanks to Scott Auric and Dave Spadafore for sharing with us why they love this island community so much. I'm Jim Morris for Lifestyle San Diego. so much for joining me, your host Craig Sewing, and our beautiful co-host Lindsay Tour and Jen Morris exploring America's finest city. That's all for today. Of course, we'll see you next week. And in the meantime, please feel free to follow us on social media. We are everywhere. Visit me at craigsewing.com. You can see all our links there. We will see you next week.